Welcome to Postscript from Faithbridge Church. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the message by sitting down with the teacher of the day. Hi, and welcome to Postscript. I'm Lou Ann Riley, Grow Group Director, and I'm here with Duffy Robbins, who just finished part two of War, War of the Worlds, a mm -hmm. look at Ephesians. Right. Uh, we're talking about spiritual warfare again, yes. and right. welcome back. Glad to continue this. Yep, glad with to be you. back. Good. Um, so, if you look at this, some people could be prone to find a devil under every rock or, mm -hmm. or read into situations. Tell right. us how we gauge if we are, in fact, in spiritual yeah. warfare. Um, I think that's an important question because, there, there, yeah, there are, um, I mentioned this last week, C.S. Lewis's comment that, you know, we sort of make two equal and opposite mistakes about the devil. One is that we completely disregard him and assume it's, you know, just a Halloween gag. The other is to is to make the mistake of over, uh, you know, being overly conscious of his presence and and uh, and literally walking around in, in fear. Mm. Um, I think I don't know if there's a um, if there's a way to gauge this. I mean, if you begin to see a head spinning, that's your first tip. But uh, but I think it's um, I think one should assume that 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 uh, you know Satan is alive and well, mm. and that uh, he is not omnipresent but he's very fast and that uh, and so that uh, he is at every opportunity trying to assail us and, and trying to foil the the work of the kingdom just assume that at the same time uh, assume that that there is a God who is omnipresent and who is omniscient all-powerful all always present who is also working every moment uh, that 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 is uh, working against the enemy. It, it's interesting too, you know, when Satan fell, um, he took with him uh, a third of the angels with him in his rebellion. Well, the math tells you then that, that if, if that's true, then for every demon, there's two angels. Right. So uh, we we know that uh, that yes, this enemy is an enemy to be um, taken seriously. But he's not an enemy that should uh, intimidate us to the point where we're afraid to live our lives full, fully. Mm. Um, that Christ is our peace and that he's already won the battle. Yeah. So, so I don't think there's a gauge per se. I think the assumption should be that, that he's real. I mean, just, just today uh, when we m meet this Sunday, there's a plumbing issue here mm -hmm. at the church. And, uh, you know, somebody hits a water main and the thing goes, well, it didn't occur to me right away. I'm, I don't go, oh, wow, you know, Satan and his demons are attacking our water. But on the other hand, as we were praying before the service, it dawned on me, yeah, this is exactly the way the enemy would work, to try to foil, to try to preoccupy, to try to distract. Dis discourage. Or... Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, you know, that doesn't make me go, oh, man, I don't I better really be careful. I'll be able to be on my guard when I'm preaching that I'm going to get struck down. I'm not, I'm not walking around in fear, but I'm conscious that, oh yeah, you know, this is, this is just exactly the way that enemy will work. On the other hand, I also know that with or without Satan, uh, people hit water mains and uh, these things happen. Yeah. And, uh, and so you, you could have a Christian plumbing company, you know, that uh, is fully protected by the blood and then they make mistakes. So, so I'm, I'm not freaked out either way. I'm aware of his presence, but I, I don't think there's any handy gauge. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So one of the ways that we can protect ourselves or fight back against is by keeping our sword sharp. Right. And so we talked, you talked a little bit about um, just being in the Word and mm -hmm. gave us some ideas for that. And one of the things that you talked about was this inductive Bible study method. Right. You recommended that we start in Luke. Why Luke? What are your... Um, well, I recommend Luke, and, and along with lots of people, as a good basic gospel because Luke, first of all, is an historian, so he's sort of trying to write the way most of us would regard uh, history. This is sort of the history. He basically says, that's my intent, is to tell this person, Theophilus, that's the very opening part of the book, all that Jesus did and taught. So that's kind of a good place to start. Plus, he's Greek, so he thought more the way we tend to think. Um, and, and you'll see this throughout Luke's Gospel, you know, citations of dates and historical figures. Um, whereas, whereas Matthew uh, is written more for a Jewish audience and, and he's citing Old Testament passages 
with which most of us, frankly, are not familiar. So that's why that's why Luke. But it's just a good, straightforward, um, you know, sort of account of the life of Jesus. Mark would be another great example. But but I think here's what happens with a lot of us. We go, oh, yeah, you know, you're right, you're right. I got to read the Bible. I really, I got to do. So you you know you jump it just like you do with every other book. You go to the very beginning of the book and. You read in Genesis, and oh yeah, oh yeah, they begin, in the beginning, of this, you know, that makes kind of read that, and then you kind of get in there, uh, and then all of a sudden there's all these uh, descendants, and you're kind of waiting through that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Then you get in Numbers, and then you get in Leviticus, <laughs> and it's like I have to yeah. sacrifice a dove, and and what's this, and why is there so much, uh, you know, stuff about about uh, you know the blood, and then the, the the ram, and and by the time you get into Deuteronomy, it's just you know it's all this instruction about how the temple is to be designed. And so you're just, you're going, I don't really know how to apply that to my life today. And so, I mean, we could redecorate the living room, but you just don't really understand how that's supposed to work out. So those are important books and they are the word of the Lord. Right. But, um, and, and I might even add that when Jesus said, you know, when he talked about the word of the Lord, that was his word, right? He mm -hmm. didn't have, you know, the Pauline letters and, and James and things like that. So he was talking about the Old Testament, but... Um, for us today, just as a just as a matter of starting, I th and I think that there's uh, I think there's um, merit to this idea in the same way that Jesus said to the disciples um, in the Gospel of John. He says, you know, there's a lot of stuff I'd like to tell you guys, mm -hmm. but you're not ready for it. And that, and and I think that was just Jesus saying, I can accommodate people. It, it, you know, when you have a small baby, you don't say, no, this kid's going to have to eat meat right away. You know, you know, you give them milk, and there comes a point at which it'd be good to get their diet beyond milk. But there's nothing wrong with saying, okay, look, there's some of the stuff I don't get. I like the way Mark Twain put it. He said, you know, don't worry about the parts of the Bible you don't understand. Worry about the parts you do understand. And uh, and so, so that's why I think Luke is a good one to begin with. Great, great. And thank you for that advice. And thank you for being here with us again today. You're welcome. Um, and thank you for joining us for Postscript. And we'll see you back here next week. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org forward slash postscript.